We are witnessing a historic moment for the first time in more than 100 years since it was attempted for the first time since this moment takes place in American history. It is 4 p.m., 4 o'clock, and House representatives are voting on whether or not to oust the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. This moment has begun, and the vote will take place on a roll call. We are coming on the air at this moment with breaking news, a historic vote Yay. unfolding in the House as Republican Speaker Kevin McCarthy faces a leadership challenge from the far-right faction of his own party. Right now, you are listening to a roll call vote, and the future for Nay. Speaker McCarthy is Four. not good. There are already eight Nay. Republicans who have voted to remove Four. Kevin McCarthy from Nay. the speakership. If all of the Democrats join those eight Republicans, Yay. McCarthy will be ousted in a historic Yay. first. This has never happened in U.S. history. Yeah, Nora, in the past, the U.S. House has tried to oust a speaker, but never before had they succeeded. But they're on the verge of doing so now. A group of House conservatives in the Freedom Caucus who have been needling and threatening to hold this vote for many months made their move today. And it appears they have galvanized enough support to oust California Congressman Kevin McCarthy from his speakership. McCarthy, who won the speakership after a 15-round marathon in January in which he did battle politically with some of these same Republicans and whose grip has been somewhat tenuous on the speakership because of these conservative members of his caucus, today appears to be destined to lose the speakership. A universal, unified vote of House Democrats helping these unlikely allies, conservative Freedom Caucus members and House Democrats joining together. Nora, what's the concern these House Freedom Caucus members have had? They don't like the deal Kevin McCarthy cut back in May to avert that debt ceiling crisis. They didn't like the agreement he made Saturday to keep the government open another 45 days, a deal that had more Democratic votes than Republicans. And the leader. And of this revolt is Matt Gates of Florida. Nora, he has had any number of concerns about, he says, transparency with McCarthy. On this vote, the yeas are 216, the nays are 210. The resolution is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. There are now more than 216 votes, a majority, to remove Kevin McCarthy as the Speaker of the House. The Republican from California has had a short term as Speaker, some eight months and 26 days. Republican Congressman Matt Gates made good on his threats last night, filing a resolution to oust Speaker Kevin McCarthy. The gentleman will state the form of his resolution. Declaring the office of Speaker of the House of Representatives to be vacant. Resolved that the office of Speaker of the House of Representatives is hereby declared to be vacant. Gates filed the motion after McCarthy worked with Democrats to pass a stopgap funding bill against the wishes of a small faction of right-wing Republicans. The Honorable the Speaker, House of Representatives, sir, this is to notify you that the first name on the letter received by the clerk pursuant to Clause 8B, 3B of Rule 1 is the Honorable Patrick T. McHenry of North Carolina. Signed sincerely, Kevin F. McCumber, Acting Clerk. We want to go now to Capitol Hill where Kevin McCarthy is speaking to reporters after being ousted as Speaker of the House. Let's My listen. My journey to this office was something people wouldn't understand. I grew up in a town of Bakersfield, California, the son of a firefighter, the grandson of immigrants. Parents worked hard, the youngest in my family. Didn't have great wealth and got out of high school, I didn't have great grades. Couldn't get a scholarship, went to community college. Flipped cars to try to pay my way through it. Went to visit some buddies away in college for a weekend, stopped at the grocery store to cash a check and I won the lottery. One of the first in California. It was before Biden economics. It was only 5,000, but it went much further back then. Took my folks to dinner, put the majority of the rest of the money into the stock market, and did pretty well. The next semester, I took a break from school. 
I went to buy a franchise, but no one said they would sell me one. I was only 20 years old. But I learned then never to give up. So I opened my own business, selling sandwiches. Three things I learned. First to work, last to leave, last to be paid. I wanted to finish my college degree. At that time, no one in my family had finished a four-year degree. I did pretty well. I now had enough money that I could pay my way through school as long as I went to Cal State. So I sold my business, going to school. I opened up the local paper and said, be a summer intern in Washington, D.C. with my local congressman. I did not know this man, but I thought he'd be lucky to have me, so I applied. And you know what he did? He turned me down. But you want to know the end of the story? I got elected to a seat I couldn't get an internship for. I ended up being the 55th Speaker of the House, one of the greatest honors. I loved every minute. And the one thing I will tell you is doing the right thing isn't always easy, but it is necessary. I don't regret standing up for choosing governing over grievance. It is my responsibility. It is my job. I do not regret negotiating. Our government is designed to find compromise. I don't regret my efforts to build coalitions and find solutions. I was raised to solve problems, not create them. So I may have lost a vote today, but as I walk out of this chamber, I feel fortunate to have served the American people. I leave the speakership with a sense of pride, accomplishment, and yes, optimism. From the day I entered politics, my mission has always been to make tomorrow better than today. I fought for what I believe in, and I believe in this country of America. My goals have not changed. My ability to fight is just in a different form. You need 218. Unfortunately, 4% of our conference can join all the Democrats and dictate who can be the Republican speaker in this House. I don't think that rule is good for the institution, but apparently I'm the only one. I believe I can continue to fight, maybe in a different manner. I will not run for speaker again. I'll have the conference pick somebody else. I hope you realize that every day I did the job, regardless whether you underestimated me or not, I wanted to do it with a smile. I grew to enjoy you, even on your toughest days and your questions. I could always tell what day it was based upon your question. Monday, you would ask if I could pass the bill. Tuesday was whether the rule would pass. Wednesday was the greatest challenge ever to my speakership. And Thursday, when we passed the bill, you didn't think it was a very big deal. And it all started again on Friday. You know, I wouldn't change a thing. Um, I do believe, I got a new portrait in there too of Teddy Roosevelt. You all know the man in the arena, one of my favorite parts of it, who errors, who comes up short again and again, but there is no effort without error and shortcoming. Who spends himself in a worthy cause, who knows the triumph of high achievement, and if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly. I always like to take a risk. Saturday, I took a risk for the American public. Regardless what anybody says, no one knew whether that would pass. The Democrats didn't want that bill. Yes, they pull a fire alarm. Yes, they do their conga line. Yes, they wanted to delay. But it was all for the American people. I could not look the troops in the eye and say I would not pay them. For those who spoke on the floor, I thank them for their positive talks. I don't know what those who voted against and said there was some deal, they were never a part of any deal. For those who said about what we accomplished, I'm proud of what we accomplished, from the Parents' Bill of Rights to our energy bill, but if they want to hold me liable because the Senate didn't take it up or the President didn't take it up, that's politics for what I know. But the one thing I do know, this country is too great for small visions of those eight. To any child that are listening and who are coming to visit the Capitol, this is a place I want you to visit. 
I liked opening the capital back up again. I liked taking away the metal detectors. I liked committees to being able to work. I like people being able to visit. I hope you like being able to be back in. I think it was important that, that members actually show up to work as well. You know, to paraphrase Lou Gehrig, he said, I might have been given a bad break, but I truly still consider myself to be the luckiest man on the face of the earth. There's no other country that you could rise to be the 55th speaker not get an internship, and be able to fight for the American public. So it was my greatest honor to be able to do it. I love my conference well. I love to be able to ability. I've been a part of the leadership team for quite some time. We won two majorities. As leader, I'm proud of the fact we only gained races, only gained seats. I'm proud of the fact, as a Republican leader, we elected more women. We elected more minorities. We expanded the base. I'm proud of the fact that for the five years I had a leader, two election cycles, we gained five more seats in California, five more in New York. We won in places no one thought we could win. The same thing you would underestimate me, you always said we'd lose each time around. We kept gaining. I intend to make sure that we gain and keep the majority in the next cycle as well. On Speaker McCarthy, is it a surprise that he's not going to run again? Do we have any sense of when he made this decision? Well, I would say yes and no. I mean, as you heard a reporter ask him, you know, he is uh, known for saying that he never gives up. But in this instance, it appears he is on another speaker run. But as you heard him explain there, some of this does come down to math. He said you need 218 for the rule, 218 for the vote. And so clearly he's making a calculation that he might not have that support, but particularly after what transpired today. You did hear him go on to say that he doesn't give up on the American people, but at the end of the day, this is a game of political math, and clearly the math did not work in his favor today, and unclear that it would work going mm -hmm. forward if he put his name in the hat again. Speaking of that math, is there a viable replacement for McCarthy who could have that math work in their favor? Well, right now, the acting speaker is Congressman Patrick McHenry, who is a close ally of the former speaker, worked with him pretty tirelessly on that uh, debt limit deal back in the spring. But uh, what we are hearing right now is that, uh, you know, members may take some time here and potentially come back next week to try to begin the process again of trying to find a new speaker, which means they'll have to have candidate forums and people will have to be uh, nominated or put their names forth uh, for this position. You know, there has been talk about uh, some of the former speaker's top deputies, uh, anyone ranging from uh, Steve Scalise, the majority leader, uh, Whip uh, Tom Emmer, who has worked very closely with members, uh, but again, all of that is just speculation right now, uh, you know, and talking to a lot of members too ahead of this vote, you know, I don't know that they have a clear person that they would like to see in this job, which may explain why they may take a few days to try to find some clarity around this. All right, Nicole Killian, thanks so much.